And joining us now, Republican Congressman Ron Paul of Texas. He's the author of a brand new book entitled The Revolution, a Manifesto, already a major bestseller. Uh, Congressman, congratulations on the new book. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Why haven't you officially dropped out of this race yet? Well, I guess the race is still on. Uh, you know, I, I made a statement a few months ago that I would stay in the race as long as there's enthusiasm, supporters are wanting to do things and our numbers are growing and there's money in the bank. And instead of us fading away with less and less, we seem to get more and more enthusiasm for what we've been doing. The other Republican challengers uh, have now endorsed John McCain, basically almost all of them. Uh, you're not ready to do that yet, are you? No, not, not quite, because I think our platform is a little bit different, and that would really confuse the supporters because they know we have a precise program and, uh, and we have to defend that program. But don't you want to see a Republican in the White House? Well, that's secondary to wanting the Constitution defended and wanting the country to go in the right direction, bringing peace around the world, having sound money and balanced budgets. All the things the Republicans, you know, traditionally have stood for. That's more important than just having a Republican. We have to know what we believe in. What's your biggest problem with Senator McCain? I would say it was the issue that motivated me probably a year and a half ago to get involved, and that has to do with our foreign policy and the war in the Middle East, because I see it so damaging to us uh, around the world, as well as something we can't afford, and now we are facing a financial crisis. And, uh, but I can't get that many allies in Washington. I mean, they are continuing to spend on war and welfare like there's no economic problem. I mean, any time a problem pops up, the Congress just appropriates more money and the Fed prints more money, and nobody seems to want to slow up. It, so seems, this it seems, Congressman, excuse me for interrupting, the two Democratic uh, remaining presidential candidates, when it comes to the war in Iraq, are a lot closer to your stance than McCain. Yeah, I, I would think so, but unless you look at the voting records, I mean, they, they really haven't voted uh, that way. Even Obama has voted to support the war and the spending, uh, and Hillary certainly has. So I, I think their rhetoric is definitely better, and you, you have to give John McCain some credit. At least he's honest about it. You know, he says, we're staying, and we need to be there, and we need to take on Iran if we have to, which is scary to me, but at least he's up front. I think the Democrats uh, are playing on some of the sympathies that I get that we ought to, you know, back away from some of these commitments. If you had to pick one of those three right now, who would, would it be? Well, it would be a, be a tough choice because I see them as all about the same. But I would think the one who would uh, most likely keep us from expanding the war is probably, probably Obama. But that doesn't mean that's an endorsement because he'd, he'd spend the money somewhere else and his voting record isn't all that great. But you asked me the question, and I would say he would be slightly better on the foreign policy. So, uh, so as long as McCain, I, I think I've heard you say in the past, supports continuing the war in Iraq, there's no way you could formally endorse him. Is that right? No, I think so. I, th I think the, the war, I want people to be talking about monetary policy and fiscal policy and all these things that are, are so important. Uh, I, I, and I also believe in unity in the Republican Party, but unity is secondary to what we believe in. If we unify on something that's non-Republican, it doesn't have a whole lot of meaning. And that's what I'm afraid the Republicans are drifting into. They're begging and pleading for unity, but we got to know what we believe in. And uh, I think that's where our problem is today. All right. The book, The Revolution, it's a huge huge bestseller. It's already out, subtitled a, a Manifesto. I see the word manifesto, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers see that word. It, it reminds them of another book that had that uh, manifesto in the title, The Communist Manifesto. Tell me what, what, what the point is of The Revolution, A Manifesto. Well, it's a declaration, but the manifesto has been used in other places uh, less uh, violently signed than, than the Communist Manifesto. It's, it's just a statement of fact and, and beliefs, and it's an attention getter. Uh, so this is the purpose, is to get the attention of the American people, what we need to do, what we need to believe in. And actually, it sounds revolutionary in the sense that it's brand new, but really what we're talking about is a peaceful revolution by just returning to the goodness of America, to our Constitution, and to the free markets and personal liberties and a non-interventionist foreign policy. It's, unfortunately, it is revolutionary to talk about obeying the Constitution, but that, in essence, is what's going on right now. A lot of your main ideas are certainly very popular with your base, and you've got thousands, millions of people out there who love your, uh, your ideas, but it hasn't, none of them really have been translated into policy yet in terms of the establishment, the Democrats, and the Republicans. What's the problem? 
Well, uh, we're competing with people who believe we can still live off other people and off the government. Uh, today, you know, we're processing a bill in Washington where uh, George Bush is asking for $100 billion for the war. Well, the Democrats are going to vote for it as long as they get $50 billion of more spending on there. And uh, there's too many special interests still in control of Washington. I believe the people are really with me on these issues and want to see us cut back and have balanced budgets and have more common sense in what we do. But the special interests are still very much in charge in Washington. Congressman Paul, uh, thanks for coming on. Thank you very much.